Antibiotics are drugs used to stop the growth of bacteria that cause infectious diseases. They have saved millions of lives. The first antibiotic was discovered in 1928, when Scottish microbiologist Alexander Fleming noticed mould growing on the agar dishes he was using to grow bacteria. He also noticed that there were clear patches, which we now call zones of inhibition, around the spots of mould. These areas were clear because the bacteria had not grown there. He concluded that the mould released a substance that killed the bacteria. Fleming was right. The substance was the antibiotic penicillin. Antibiotics are specific to the types of bacteria they affect. This means that hospital laboratories need to find out which antibiotic should be prescribed to a patient with a bacterial infection. The method they use can also be carried out in the classroom. First, agar dishes are made by pouring liquid agar onto petri dishes and letting them cool. Agar is a jelly that has had nutrients added to it that bacteria need to grow. It is important to make sure that the dishes and agar are heated to high temperatures so that they are sterile and have no microorganisms on their surface. These would contaminate the bacterial samples being grown. The surface of the agar is then inoculated with a strain of bacteria, such as a harmless form of E. coli. You need a lawn of bacteria for this investigation. The easiest way to do this is to use a pipette to put a few drops of a bacterial culture over the plate and then use a glass spreader to spread the culture so it fully coats the agar surface. It's important that both the pipette and the glass spreader are sterilised to avoid contaminating the agar plate. A culture is a mixture of bacteria in a nutrient broth. You'll not be able to see the bacteria as they're so small. However, if you place the dish in a warm place, called incubation, the bacteria will reproduce to form many, many more. Remember, the warm place in your school should be 25 degrees Celsius. These large groups can be seen, and the surface of the agar will have a milky or cloudy appearance. To test which antibiotics can kill this strain of bacteria, you soak small discs of filter paper in different antibiotics. Make sure you label the discs so that you know which antibiotic is on which. The discs are placed on the surface of the agar using forceps. Sometimes a control disc is used, which has been soaked in distilled water. Making the bacterial lawn and placing the discs onto the plate must be carried out using an aseptic technique to ensure that no microorganisms from the air land on the plate. The plate is placed under a lit Bunsen burner and the lid of the dish only opens slightly on an angle before being replaced as quickly as possible. Any equipment used, for example a pipette and forceps, must be sterile before use. The neck of the culture bottle is also sterilised before use by passing it through a blue Bunsen burner flame. The plates are then sealed using small pieces of sticky tape and placed upside down in a warm place such as an incubator. The temperature used must not be more than 30 degrees Celsius. This stops the growth of any pathogenic bacteria. Placing the plates upside down means that any condensation that forms falls on the lid, not on the agar. After incubation, you will see clear zones of inhibition around some of the antibiotic discs. In this example, A was the control disc. B, E, F and G were effective antibiotics. This can be seen as the agar around them remains clear, meaning that the growth of bacteria has been inhibited or prevented by the antibiotic. The bacteria was resistant to antibiotic C, which can be seen as bacterial growth has not been inhibited. In order to compare the effectiveness, you can measure the area of the zones of inhibition. This is calculated by using the formula pi multiplied by the radius of the circle squared. Let's say that, in this example, the diameter of the zone of inhibition around antibiotic B is 4.2 centimetres. The radius is found by dividing the diameter in half, which gives 2.1 centimetres. Pi is 3.14 to three significant figures. Using all this in the formula gives you the calculation 3.14 times 2.1 squared equals 13.8 square centimetres. The larger the area, the more effective the antibiotic is at stopping the growth of the bacteria. You can see that antibiotic E was the most effective.
Antiseptics are substances that are used outside of the body to kill bacteria. You can use the same technique to find out which antiseptics are most effective, or how the concentration of an antiseptic affects the growth of bacteria.